Hello and welcome back to Football Manager 2020 with Newcastle United. We're already into December and we've had a very good November. Since the last episode, obviously, we actually managed to beat West Ham somehow when we weren't the better side. We've then gone undefeated for a month and then lost to Liverpool, but we went undefeated. And interestingly, we're actually in a very good position when it comes to our Champions League group as well. We started off then with a 3-0 victory against Bayer. We battered them, absolutely battered them. Gwendouzi and Marlon Charles with the two goals here. Southampton, it was a 1-1 draw. Edson with the goal for us. Against Wolves, it was Marlon Charles with the goal, giving us three points in the Champions League against AC Milan. Another 1-1 draw. This time, Fernando Zelaya scoring us an equaliser. Fite up then finally scored his first goal for a very, very long time. I think it's actually his first outfield goal all season against Leeds United, giving us a 1-0 victory. And then against Liverpool, we were not very good because it's Liverpool and they're actually a lot better than us. We lose 2-0. So league table wise then, we are currently sat in the middle, 11th place, 5 wins, 5 draws, 5 defeats, positive 1 goal difference. It's going to be a fairly uneventful season in the Premier League. Match number 1 of the episode then, away from home against Sheffield United at Bramall Lane. We are playing the 4-1-2-3 wide Gagan Press. This is basically what I've played every single match since the end of the last episode. And it's clearly worked for us, so we're sticking with it. Adonam will be our goalkeeper. Restrepo, Munoz, Zelaya and Johnny Santos will be the back four. Charles Cesar, Chris Choley and Lewis Cook in the middle. Edson and Marlon Charles on the wings. And Fite Arp is going to be our striker because he's, the, he's our only striker who's actually managed to score an outfield goal. I did just see that Sheffield United are playing Wilfred and Didi as a right back. Did, did I? Are they, do, they are doing that. Is he a right back? He's not really a right back, is he? He can kind of play there. That's very odd. Well, just over 12 minutes have been played so far. Zero highlights. We are having a decent amount of shots, but none of them apparently are going to be highlight worthy. We're now 25 minutes in. with nothing still happening. Okay, now we've finally got something happening. 25 and a half minutes. Edson collects the ball on that right-hand side. Cuts inside into the area. Goes for goal. It's not a very good effort from the Brazilian wonder kid straight into the keeper's hands. 10 minutes later and there is another highlight. Yankov with the ball for Sheffield United. Potts now inside his own half. Is he going to go backwards? Yankov lumps it upfield for Sheffield United. Restrepo heads forward. Now Marlon Charles, who, by the way, has finally got England caps. He's finally got England caps and scored a goal as well. Edson, edge of the area, tries to cross it in, can't manage it. Charles Cesar is there. The Brazilian somehow manages to score a goal. Not sure how Marlon Charles got an assist for that because he wasn't even involved in the move. It's 1-0 against Sheffield United. I will take it. So how is Marlon Charles getting the assist for this? Charles has the ball there. Edson then gets it. Tries to cross it in, doesn't manage it. It doesn't go anywhere near Marlon Charles. Charles says a, and Charles gets an assist. Fair enough. I mean, this here has said Edson's got the assist, not Marlon Charles. I don't understand. Half time then at Bramall Lane, we are 1 0 to the good. We are dominating, absolutely dominating. I'd like to get another goal or two, or three, or seven. Another seven goals. Johnny Santos is going to have to come off because he's taken a knock of some sort. So we're going to stick Munoz as a right back, and then Big Dids is going to come on. Thinking also Marlon Charles might need to come off for Thiago Almada. I mean, we're doing two subs at half-time when we're winning. Probably not the best plan. There is a free kick for Sheffield United just 45 seconds into the second half. Anthony goes for goal. He does go for goal. Puts it in the back of the net. It's 1-1. Cardozo with a free kick for Sheffield United a couple of minutes later. It's almost 2-1. Chole just about gets the ball clear as well. Well, I think their manager at half-time might have given them a bit of a shouting at because they've already had more chances in the second half than they did in the first. 70 minutes now on the clock. Nothing's really happening in the second half other than the goal. Potts with the ball for Sheffield United and Didi. Now Di Ketelare, maybe, possibly, plays the ball across. Ortega collects it. Edson's in front of him, plays it back instead. Yankov finds Liam Miller on that left-hand side. Every time we've played against Liam Miller, he's scored against us. Ortega, Di Ketelare, him, that guy, gets the ball to Potts. He's still got it. He's got a long name, confusing name. We're not even going to try and say it anymore. He's got it again. Potts plays it forward. Miller's not going to get there. The header down finds Lewis Cook. Upfield. Fite up. Is he going to get himself another goal? He goes for goal. His effort is just wide of the post. He could and possibly should have got another goal. Just seen he's on a 6.0. He's coming off. Franco Di Matteo is coming on. And I'm going to give you a team talk, buddy. And I'm going to say aggressive. Do we be aggressive? Yes. Let's be aggressive. He was deep in thought. I just shouted at a man for no reason. 
final five minutes of the game and we do actually have a highlight with a minute not a minute what was that three minutes and ten seconds to play Zelaya lumps it upfield we've got a player wearing we've got all, loads of players wearing just all black kits it doesn't matter Dimitro in on goal his effort is wide of the post why have half of our team now just decided to wear an all black kit they look like referees it's dropped points again it is absolutely dropped points again our strikers have stopped performing and I don't get it I really don't understand Fite up so he scored one goal. If we look at his form, if we look at his form here, a 6.7 he got against Liverpool, six, a 7.1 against Leeds where he scored. But he's just not scoring goals. He's just not doing it. And he's not the only one. Well, you're going to get an angry team talk. You're not going to come in for training because in a few days' time, we're going to be playing Celtic. And we might have the opportunity to go through to the first knockout round of the Champions League. So just looking at our squad very quickly, our top goal scorer is Edson with six. Then Zelaya, who is a centre-back with three. Marlon Charles, who's a left-back slash left-winger with three. Then Johnny Santos, who's a right-back with two. Chayole, central midfielder with two. Roman Martin, who's mainly a left-winger, with two. Fiete Arp is our, what, seventh top goal scorer? And he's our first striker on the list. And then if we keep going down, Charles Cesar, midfielder, centre-back, midfielder, midfielder. I mean, even Harry Maguire's got a goal. And he's played one game. Thiago Almada, left-winger. Our strikers just don't score goals. Lopez Bays, seven starts, seven off the bench, zero goals. If we then find Di Matteo, five starts, seven off the bench, zero goals. I don't know what's happening. I really don't know what's happening. We need to start scoring some goals. Anyway, we're going to go forward. Actually, no, we're not. We're going to have a quick look at the league table. We've moved up to ninth. We've moved up to ninth. Okay, it's still not ideal, is it? Because uh, there is a huge gap, a huge gap between us and eighth place. And apparently, that 1-1 draw gives us a C rating. Fair enough. Right, we're going to go forward. Time to play Celtic. We have made it then across the border to Glasgow to play Celtic. And we are going for a little bit of an experiment. But that's right, we are going strikerless. And I don't know if it's going to work, but our strikers don't score goals anyway, so it can't be worse. In goal then will be Adanam, Restrepo, Zelaya, Munoz and Johnny Santos will be the back four. Charles Cesar, Lewis Cook and Matteo Guendouzi will be the midfield trio with Marlon Charles and Edson as the wingers and Thiago Almada playing as a shadow striker in the middle. I don't know whether it's going to work but like I've said, does it really matter if our strikers don't score goals anyway? If we're not playing on there, maybe we can just overload this area of the pitch where they've got Callum McGregor and Mason Mount. They, they've, we, we're going to struggle. It's, it's not going to work, is it? What am I doing? In addition to this match, we can qualify for the first knockout rounds. And I will show you why. Let's pause the game very quickly. So, AC Milan are playing Bayer. If either one of those teams win and we beat Celtic, what will happen is one of those teams will be on 13 points. The other one will be on 10. We will be on 11 points if we beat Celtic. We can actually go through... And I can't believe we might be going through in a group with AC Milan and they might finish third. 15 minutes in and so far we've had no highlights. We've had a decent amount of shots as we did against Sheffield United. But again, none of them are highlight worthy. In fact, the way this is going, I don't think anything's going to be highlight worthy. Hold on, no, there is a corner. It is Mason Mount stepping up for Celtic towards the middle. It's not cleared very well. It's eventually cleared. And potentially we can break with Almada, that shadow striker, running down the right-hand side. Is he going to cross it in? He gets tackled by Johnson. And it is going to be a throw. Half time then. Nil-nil. If it stays this way, we're going to the Europa League again. I don't want to go back in the Europa League. We've already won that one. Assertively... I'm not happy. Never praise them. Nil-nil was not a good result. I'd like to point out, Thiago Almada is on a 6.6, .6, which is much better than the 6.4 that our striker usually gets. Let's give him a show some passion. The second half has been just as exciting as the first half, by the looks of it. We might need to do something, and that something is going to take place now. And it's Edson's just gone and got injured. Edson's gone and got injured. What's happened? Well, he's going to come off. We're gonna bring we're gonna do that, and then we're just gonna try and rearrange until we get something that works. Sure, that'll work, right? Santos, Munoz, Bamba, Zelaya, Restrepo as that back five. Charles Cesar and Lewis Cook in the middle. Gwen Doozy is gonna be an attacking midfielder. Marlon Charles and Thiago Almada will be strikers. It's it's not gonna work, is it? Why am I doing this? Why am I doing this? Right, nothing's happened since the injury, so we're gonna do another change. Marlon Charles is gonna drop back to be a left back. Restrepo is gonna come off. For Franco Di Matteo, we're then going to do Guendouzi off 
for Fite Arp. Not Gwen. Why have I clicked on Gwendozy? Swap you two over. That's that's it. We need a goal. We need to get a goal. Could this be the goal that we need? 81 minutes. Lewis Cook with the ball inside the Celtic half. Finds Marlon Charles. The now left back crosses in. Back post. It's Johnny Santos. Johnny Santos forces a very easy save from Nick Pope. That could have been the goal. It probably should have been the goal. If that was anyone else and not Johnny Santos, we probably could have scored then. Di Matteo with a corner. Why is our striker taking corners? I don't know. Big Dids collects it. He's been tackled by Maitland-Niles. And now Scott for Celtic plays it all the way back to the goalkeeper. This highlight doesn't seem to want to end. Maitland-Niles. Okay, it does end. Now now there's another highlight up the other end. Mason Mount crosses the ball in. Zelaya heads it clear. Now Lewis Cook. Potentially, can we break? The English international running down the left-hand side. And Newcastle captain, by the way. He's got three in the middle. Four in the middle. If he can find any one of them, he's found Thiago Almada. And that goal might have put us into the Champions League knockout round. We've moved up to second place. We've moved up to second place. We've got four and a half minutes of normal time. Johnny Santos is going to get on the end of Big Dids' free kick forward. Santos crosses in. Doesn't manage to get past the first man, though. Scott with the ball for Celtic. Smashes it upfield. Munoz heads forward. Santos keeps it in play. Across finds Charles Cesar. Johnny Santos been invited to go forward from Cesar. Gets tackled. Keeps hold of the ball, though. Charles Cesar once again. Santos is making another run. Munoz with it. Plays it in the middle now. Cook. Almada the goal scorer. Finds Marlon Charles. Yes, he does. The England international cuts inside, goes for goal very poorly, and it is saved. And now we've got another highlight. Throw from Charles Cook now back to the Paraguayan Zelaya. Zelaya's going to play it all the way back. Yes, he does. All the way back to Adenam. We've got three minutes and ten seconds left of normal time just to hold on to this lead. Fite up. Charles Cesar. Now Lewis Cook. We're passing it. We're not going forward at the moment. Santos now down that right-hand side. If, if he gets past his man, he might cross it in. He crosses in early. Di Matteo's there. He's hit the post because he's a striker. And strikers don't ever score goals. Five minutes of injury time, apparently. We've got 30 seconds of normal time to play. And there is a highlight. Henderson to Mason Mount. Plays it all the way back. It's McKenna. Lots of space to run into. Maitland-Niles on the right-hand side. He's just going to run straight towards goal. Goes for goal. Tries to get it over Adenam, but Adenam can hold on. The clock is ticking away. The clock is ticking away. The full-time whistle goes. We have qualified for the Champions League knockout round in the most awkward way possible, I'd say. We didn't really deserve that. We had loads and loads of chances, but none of them were really good enough. We've managed to beat Celtic. I'm pretty sure Bayer managed to beat AC Milan, which means AC Milan dropped down into the Europa League. Oh my word. AC Milan turned it around. If they did not, whoever you are, E. Romero, Emmanuel Romero, you have just basically given us Champions League football. If you did not score that goal in the 94th minute, we would have finished third. So there you have it then, looking at Group E, AC Milan top the table, Newcastle, us in second place with the best goal difference. Somehow, a team who really struggled to score goals had the best goal difference in our group. I'm not sure how we managed that. Bayer finishing in third place and Celtic probably didn't even want to turn up for this year. Edson has picked up an injury 8 to 10 days. That's not ideal. Right, when do we find out who we're going to be playing? When is the draw? The 13th, which is in how many days are we playing Bournemouth before or after that? We're playing them before. Right, what we're going to do is we are going to play the Bournemouth game. I'll play it off camera now. I will return to find out who we're going to be playing in the Champions League first knockout round. So you'll know who to expect possibly in the next episode or maybe the one after. The next episode is going to be someone in January. Welcome back. We have played Bournemouth. We've drawn 1-1. We were not very good. I'll get onto that in just a second. We've also got our new uh, youth intake preview. Um, is it any good? We should be really optimistic about this group of young players. That's good news. Obviously, we do still have five negatives. Uh, no wingbacks. Fullbacks aren't very good. That's fair enough. Many of our prospective defence midfielders aren't looking like they'll trouble the first team. Okay. Wide midfielders aren't good. And our attacking midfielders aren't good. So we might be getting a good goalkeeper, some centre-backs, and maybe a striker. Although, it does say here, got a lot of full-backs and a top prospect in the centre of midfield. But none of... I, it literally contradicts itself. Anyway, let's talk about Bournemouth quickly. So yes, it was a 1-1 draw. Matteo lopez Bayes opened the scoring for us in 68 minutes. James Madison equalised on the 77th minute. We had 25 shots, scored one of them. We cannot take our chances at the moment, and I don't know why. 
It does mean league table wise we are now in 12th place, 5 wins, 7 draws and 5 defeats. But the reason why we are here right now is for the Champions League first knockout rounds and we've got some teams to pick from certainly. Do we go against, is it always we have to play a seeded team? Is that how it works? I don't know. Basically everyone's really good here apart from us. Red Bull Leipzig are first out against Real Madrid, Inter Milan versus Liverpool, Napoli versus PSG, Arsenal versus AC Milan. So we can still get Monaco, Man United, Bayern or Juventus. Great. Or Atletico Madrid, can we get them? Bayern Munich have Atletico Madrid, Spurs versus Juventus, Newcastle versus Monaco. Okay, I'm glad it's Monaco and not Man United. I was expecting to play Man United, which is not an exciting game. So the first thing I notice when I click on Monaco is their top goal scorer is former Newcastle striker Amin Gouiri. Um Scored 18 goals in 64 appearances for us. He scored 89 goals in 119 for Monaco. That's that's a lot of goals, isn't it? Who have they got? He's their top goal scorer by a country mile as well. If we've got anyone, any other names on here that I want to have a look at, not really. Let's do this and sort by value. They've got, I mean, there's a lot of expensive players. They're loaning people in from Liverpool and also from Liverpool and if you're from Liverpool okay you're from PSG Jude Bellingham from Everton hold on how did I miss that one we signed him we signed June Bellingham right at the start of the save anyway that is going to do it for this episode again might be quite a long episode this one next episode what are we going to do we're going to go somewhere in January we're probably going to do Actually, we're probably just going to go all the way through to the Spurs game, aren't we? We might just do Spurs there. We'll have a transfer window roundup because I've already made some deals because this is how I play Football Manager. So, yeah, expect somewhere maybe late January, maybe the Spurs game. But it'll probably only be one match in the next episode. But that's going to do it for this one. Thank you very much for watching. If you did enjoy, do remember to leave a like. If you want to see more, hit the subscribe button. I'll be back next time with more Football Manager.